Uh, new Obama gun rules require those selling guns, even a single one to a family member, or transferring it to be registered, national registry. This is the, a bunch of news is coming at the bottom of the hour. He'll ride shotgun with us. He's an InfoWars investigative journalist. Uh, Wayne Madsen, WayneMadsenReports.com. Uh, Wayne, formerly uh, in, in the Navy and anti-submarine warfare, uh, then, of course, uh, head of a major security operations at the National Security Agency, uh, one of the first big NSA whistleblowers 15 years ago or more, uh, works with InfoWars.com as a roving journalist. You just heard my rant, but, I mean, you know, it's one thing to have a pill popping drunk like Nixon. At least they don't want to destroy the country. You've investigated Obama, written books about him like nobody else out there. You're not some right winger. I'd call you more of an overall patriotic, libertarian, progressive, not in the George Soros sense, but as a real one, uh, classical, liberal, whatever. I mean, you know, five years ago when you were saying Obama you know, we're, does have weird Muslim ties, I, I was still poo-pooing that. Uh, I've got sources in the White House. I mean, I don't know if it's a psyop or whatever, but he's hitting his knees to Mecca uh, he's trying to destroy the country. I, I, I want to get into Soros funding attacks on Christians all over the world. I mean, what's the grand plan here, Wayne Madsen? Well, I, I think Soros is the master of uh, chaos. Uh, I, he, you know, he actually has figured out a way to make money through constant disruption and constant chaos, whether it's financial chaos, how he shorts national currencies or uh, by uh, funding the street demonstrations that eventually turn into full-scale uh, coup d'etats like we saw happen in Ukraine and Georgia and in the so-called Arab Spring, which he bankrolled also, Libya, Egypt, Tunisia, uh, funding uh, the, the uprising in Syria with all of its disastrous effects. And now we've got Soros telling Europe, yeah, you've taken in a million of these uh, Muslim migrants, mostly from the Middle East and North Africa, but you can take in a few million more, and, and now it's being reported. It's not being reported here because of the political correctness issue, and I think Trump is really on to something with his, uh, his tirade on political correctness. But uh, we just had uh, reports on New Year's Eve out of Germany, thousands of these uh, jihadi gangbangers uh, going around in wolf packs, basically, raping German women who are out celebrating New Year's Eve. Now oh, we have video of it. We're going to skip this network yeah. break. This is so important. Let's let's show the articles at Infowars.com of mass gang rapes. Thirty-five women raped at once. Police standing down. Churches being raided. I mean, this is a foaming at the mouth jihadis that couldn't take over Syria. The Russians kicked them out. So now they went back to Turkey and they dumped them in Europe. I mean, this is over the top. Yeah, and, and and I, you know, and we have Turkey. You know, this Erdogan, the president, becoming a neo Ottoman emperor, uh, and who does Obama use as his sounding board and his advisor for uh, issues in the Middle East? He talks to Erdogan, Erdogan, who whose uh, Muslim uh, cleric uh, just said that it's it, it, uh, engaged couples in Turkey should not be walking around holding hands. Looks like Turkey is going to go back to the ways of Saudi Arabia, which just, of course, executed uh, a major Shia cleric and some minor Shia clerics. And that now we're supposed to uh, be on the side of Saudi Arabia as they basically they, they started this to get into a war with Iran. This is one case where the United States ought to just switch sides and say, you, Saudi Arabia, you did it on 9-11 with some of your friends. And now you're trying to get us into a major shooting war with Iran. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, we're retargeting our weapons. They're not pointing at Tehran anymore. They're pointing at Riyadh, Jeddah, and Mecca. Well, I tell you, Wayne, uh, you can see Operation Chaos worldwide. Uh, Spectre doesn't exist in fantasy land, but it, it exists in the real world with just all Hades breaking loose. And... I got to say, I supported the Bundys and others and my reporters when they went. When the feds had kicked all 35 other ranching families off, they were the last family there. Harry Reid was in a land swap for solar panels in one area. This was going to be the environmental easement uh, in the other. And But now, them going in when they're not wanted by the locals and taking over this area, it's just the timing with Obama and his gun control push 
and everything that's going on really, really smells to me. And again, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm saying the whole thing with it now all over the news that, oh, my gosh, white domestic terrorists are attacking, you know, all the, quote, uh, Black Lives Matter people saying, you know, go kill them, send in the National Guard. I'm really concerned about them trying to kick off some type of civil unrest in this country uh, on the back of the gun control. Uh, what's your take on that? And do you have any ideas or strategies to try to uh, navigate out of this? And then let's get into your article that we ran at Infowars.com yesterday dealing with uh, Soros' top 10 hit list, Christians being number one. Well, people can always be used by those who have agendas. And uh, remember Occupy Wall Street. Uh, Soros, of course, did provide some money uh, for Occupy Wall Street. But then we had, as, as we started to see the Occupy movement gel in New York and Washington and L.A. and other cities, we had the FBI come out and they got caught uh, because it was in their own documents that they were going to start uh, using FBI snipers to pick off the leaders of the Occupy movement who were speaking in these various uh, city centers. So there's a perfect example of how a guy like Soros will cooperate with the government to basically surface the leadership uh, for ulterior motives. And uh, and we saw, look, you can go back to the uh, anti-Vietnam War protests when you, you had like the SDS occupying university offices, ROTC buildings on campuses. And the later we found out a lot of these uh, SDS members were FBI informants. So. Uh, they were ratting out the, the people who wanted to keep it nonviolent, of course. Absolutely. And then all I do, all I do is I come out Sunday and yesterday and I say, I support uh, the overall idea, what the bunnies are doing. I know the feds are grabbing these mines and property. It's part of the deindustrialization shutdown program, Agenda 21, Agenda 2030. But the timing and where you're at, please watch out for provocateurs, watch out for infiltrators. Please, uh, and I told the feds, please try to de-escalate. Don't play into the civil war plan that your foreign bosses want. Come on, let's let, let's really come together here. Let's not be stupid. I'm like a wartime broadcaster talking to both sides and not be idiots. And then the response is people run from my reporters who are, quote, you know, involved in all this and some of the prominent people who I don't even know their names. And they go, how dare Alex Jones say I'm a fed and, and, and Eamon Bundy's a fed. And Joe's like, he never said that. Well, it doesn't matter. That's what we were told. So you're bad. I mean, obviously, who's telling them that? I mean, this is so textbook, how they cut these people out, how they manipulate them. It's just so sad how they play them. Uh, and, and it's just so, I've, I've been doing this for 20 plus years. I told people that the Hatari militia was being infiltrated. And then six months later, they busted them and brought them down. And I worked to try to get the judge to drop the case. And they did. We blew that wide open. And then I don't even get thanks because a lot of the folks involved in it aren't even smart enough. I'm just being serious to get what happened to them. I mean, it's it's like Nigerian emails. I remember this has been going on for about 16, 17 years where you get the email that you've you that Prince Habubu or Habibi or whatever they say it is at the time literally has ten thousand dollars for you. But he's reached out to you because he's heard you're a wonderful person. They usually target women. And that if you give them $10,000, he will give you $1 million next week. You give him the $10,000, he goes, oh, the prince may be able to speak to you on the phone. Sorry, he's been arrested by King Agugu or whatever they make up. I mean, it's literally ridiculous. You look it up, the people don't even exist. And then you're already in for ten grand, con, so you don't want to admit it. And you, you, you finally have to talk to Prince Abubu though, or Abibi or whatever the name is. You want to believe you've won the lottery. Well, you start telling friends and family do not give them more money. It's not real. They go, shut up. You're just jealous. I got that I'm about to get five million now and I give them another 20 grand. And you go, no, it's not real. It's a scam. And even when they give them the next round of money, I've known three people that did this. They will never talk to me again. They will not admit they were wrong. They will not admit they got conned. Just like Obama voters or whatever on the free health care of Obamacare and they double, triple prices. And there was literally a talk show host I knew who I heard on air one day. I thought it was a joke when I heard it. This was like 12, 13 years ago. It was about 14 years ago, announcing that he had been contacted by a Nigerian prince that wanted to fund his show. And I called him and I said, it's not real. And he literally went on air and said, I was jealous trying to stop it. And then later said, I jinxed the deal with the prince. 
I mean, it's the same thing. I'm like, look out for feds. They'll say I'm bad. They'll say, you know, violence is good, whatever. They'll try to escalate. Please watch out. And then that means I said they're feds. I mean, it's just so hard to deal with this psychology. And quite frankly, Wayne, very, very sad. Well, yeah, I mean, this is a psychological warfare after all that's going on. And unfortunately, we see a lot of the, the media is, for example, NBC News is not even reporting that these uh, gangs of jihadi gangbangers are in fact from North Africa and the Middle East primarily. They're just saying they were uh, young German men. Well, first of all, they're not German. <laughs> and uh, second of all, so they don't just lie. They don't just lie. They scapegoat Germans. You know, those Germans are really bad rapists. Let's repopulate Europe with radical Muslims. They don't rape women. Yeah, they're trying. Maybe to they'll blame it. Germans for beheading 47 people in Saudi Arabia Sunday. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Did you hear about the Germans, what they did in Saudi Arabia? Right. And the NBC and the Soros uh, linked media is trying to say they're trying to say what happened in Germany is just part of the war on women. It has nothing to do with that. These are jihadist gangbangers that the Soros people basically welcomed into Europe uh, with all kinds of propaganda help and financial help. Exactly. There's your headline. Feminists recycle radical Muslim rapes to demonize men. There's That's the sick. What is the sick leftist uh, alignment with radical Islam? Because both you and I were against the clash of civilizations. We were against all these invasions. You've been to Libya. You've been to Syria. You've been in daring, you know, coverage when you're getting, I know, shot at, uh, you know, and bombs are going off. I mean, you're a real war correspondent. And, 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 you know, you're not against Muslims. But, my God, we don't have to take all their 18-year-old jihadists that got their butts kicked in Syria to come rape our women. And then have Gloria Steinem tell us we did it. No, you witch, we didn't do it. Western men treat women the best, you witch. Well, it's, it's funny, in the city of Cologne, where some of these uh, Muslim gang rapes took place, the mayor was attacked uh, by a so-called right-winger wielding a knife. They said that he got her in the neck, and she's uh, basically a member of the Social Democratic Green Party alliance. She was welcoming these migrants into Germany, and now she's uh, bemoaning the fact that they were raping uh, German women on the streets of her city in, in Cologne or Kuhn, as it is in two, Germany. Two, exactly, and we've showed the clips. Two of the Green Party leaders in Germany have openly said it's good that whites are going to be gotten rid of. Germans are bad. These are Germans. Thank God we're turning into Islam. Well, why don't they move to Saudi Arabia then and these women can squat in a, in a, in a slave pit? Go ahead, sorry. Well, yeah, so we, we had, of course, the Soros gang, which really runs the European Union. Uh, the European Union is basically a contrivance for people like Soros and his banker friends. Uh, you know, they put pressure on all these members of the EU. you got to take in so many of these refugees, so-called refugees, when we know that Erdogan in Turkey was pipelining uh, these basically young men. And then the Saudis said, oh, we'll help. We'll We'll help uh, fund the building of 200 mosques in, in Germany. Of course, these are unbelievable Bahamas mosques. Uh, they don't intend to go anywhere anytime soon because the Saudis want to build mosques for them. And King Salman, who now wants to get in a war with Iran, uh, he was the governor of Riyadh. I exposed him. He was one of the guys that paid money and paid for airplane tickets and hotel uh, bills for these uh, hijackers, what became hijackers, to go to Afghanistan through Pakistan, and then they came back to this country. So he, his fingerprints are all over the 9-11. I agree. Stay there. Stay there. Let's talk about the huge Sunni-Shiite civil war that's now raging across Africa, the Middle East, and Asia, now being exported to Europe. David Neidl chimed in with breaking news. Obama has thrown down the gauntlet. Unprecedented, massive gun grabs now taking place. This is it, folks. The beginning. We're on the mark. We're brought up to believe that the last generation went through the incredible times, that the last generation fought the big wars, that the last generation somehow lived in a more exciting reality than we do. I think that happens to every generation and every culture throughout civilization's history. But in the modern world, people at a subconscious level almost believe entertainment and TV is real. They believe reality TV is real. It's some of the fakest television out there. Up until the time I was about four, I thought that the world was black and white when movies were black and white. And then finally, I was sitting there watching Gilligan's Island one day, and it was color. 
my dad said, no, son, it's film. The world was always color. But the first season of Gilligan's Island was shot in black.